everyone. Welcome to Dit Dot. My name is Amanda. Today I am making a pineapple fish dinner. And I don't know about you, but like sometimes I get on kicks and like I'll do Asian inspired meals one day or one week. And this week I seem to be on a Tex-Mex kind of thing. So my last video was chicken salsa and this is a pineapple salsa fish, but believe me, these are very different dishes. The chicken salsa is kind of like a poached chicken and this one is a fresh salsa that is served on top so let's just get started okay ideally i would really be using a fresh pineapple right now but i don't know if they're not in season i mean they are shipped in from hawaii so maybe it's a COVID thing i just haven't seen them in the grocery store much this year so i am going to be using canned pineapple it's not my first choice but you know, in a pinch, it'll, it'll be fine. So what I have here is some smashed garlic cloves. I've got a very small white onion that I cut in half and a couple of tomatoes. I actually was just gonna make this as a fresh salsa completely, but I was watching my YouTube friend, Greg. His channel is The Pot Thickens and he did a charred salsa the other day. And I was like, oh, that looks so good. And I have salsa on my menu. So I'm gonna be inspired by him and do my pineapple salsa charred like his was. Um, he didn't do pineapple, but uh, he agreed with me that would be very good. So normally I would use like a paper towel for this, but I uh, must be out. I don't use paper towels very often, but I like to keep them on hand for things like this. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of blot these pineapple rings that will give them a chance to get a better char. Whoa. So I'm just kind of pushing them around on my cookie sheet here. Now, you might notice I don't have any peppers on my cookie sheet. Use whatever kind of pepper your family likes. Jalapeno would be perfect. I thought about doing a poblano because sometimes my family will tolerate poblanos, but my kids and husband just really aren't lovers of spicy foods. So the garlic will give it enough bite and I'm actually gonna add a can of mild chilies to this. But if you like spicy food, by all means, add a jalapeno to this and get it good and charred. So I'm just making a small <coughs> amount. What in? All done. All done. He is very hyped up today. I'm making a small amount, just enough for this dinner, but it would be really good to, I need to throw this away. It keeps falling into my dishes. My, the little lid broke. Okay, what was I saying? Oh yes, I'm just making enough for this dinner, but this would be really good just as a salsa to dip your chips in. So please, by all means, make more. I'm using avocado oil because avocado oil can stand high heats. And I'm just kind of lightly, and I put some avocado on the bottom of the cookie sheet too. So I have been preheating my oven to 500 degrees, a convection oven. You can also use your broiler and we're gonna pop it in. All right, we'll check on it in a little bit. Today I'm gonna use some tilapia. It's pretty common, easy to find fish. Cod would be good. You know, just any kind of light white fish. And I've got just a pre-mixed Cajun seasoning here. This one I've used before and it's fairly mild, so I know my family will be okay with it but I'm gonna sprinkle on some Cajun seasoning and then I'm gonna use my secret ingredient, which is my smoked salt. I talked about this in my last video too. I absolutely adore smoked salt. This one is applewood and I will put a link in the description box below, an Amazon link. You definitely wanna add it to your kitchen. Okay, today I'm going to be using my cast iron skillet because I want to almost kind of blacken my fish up. And I'm gonna go again with my avocado oil and put down a pretty decent amount. It's not gonna flow ever since this lid broke. There we go. Come on, avocado oil. I'm using a little bit more than I normally would because I am using, I am cooking fish and I don't want it to stick and I do you want to give it a chance to get nice and hot? 
Okay, I don't wanna forget about my vegetables because once I start focusing on my fish, those vegetables will go out of my mind. Although, with it being 500 degrees, it is hot. Let me turn on the light there, get a little bit more light in here. All right, this is still getting hot. I'm gonna show you a really cool trick. One way to tell if oil is hot enough to start using in a shallow pan like this when you're not deep frying is if you put your a wooden spoon in and you see it bubble up like that, then you know it is hot. So let's get this fish in. And when we put the fish down in here, we don't wanna mess with it. And you do want that sizzling sound. We're gonna try not to flip the fish too often because we don't wanna have it fall apart on us. So I'm gonna try to give it enough time to cook on this side and then I'll flip it. I pulled out my vegetables to check on them. The garlic is getting good, but the rest don't have much color yet. I rotated the tomatoes around. I'll give the garlic another couple minutes and then I'll probably pull it out soon. The fish is getting white around the edges, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. All right, if when you go to try to flip it over, it doesn't release quite easily, leave it alone and come back to it in a minute. Ah, it doesn't wanna flip, there we go. Ooh, didn't quite get that blackened look I was going for, but. I'd rather not stick, so we'll go for cooked over sticking. I'm gonna give this a few more minutes on this side and then I'll cook up the other two pieces that I didn't have room for. It happens to the best of us. I was trying to see if this fish was finished cooking and one of mine fell apart. But the good news is that's a very good indicator that it is done cooking when fish is done, it'll gently flake apart like that. So that one won't be so pretty, but that's okay. The rest of these off. Oh, it's hot. All right, so I have my food processor set up. And I've got the garlic in here and I'm gonna go ahead and add the onions first because I want them to kind of process up a little bit more than everything else. So we're gonna do this in a couple of steps. There's like an onion skin. I'll just leave that alone. Yeah, if these tomato skins peel off pretty easy. I'll probably leave them off because otherwise you just get these like pieces of tomato skin that unless you like just puree the thing it these tend to get stuck in your teeth right so these skins should peel off fairly easy and uh, it's up to you if you want to leave them on or not i'm going to pull them off kind of wish i'd done more pineapple but yeah live and learn all right let's process up this onion and garlic oh plugging it in helps Making sure it's off and then plugging it in helps. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Trying to get everything done fast because I don't want my fish to cool down too much while I'm doing this part. So I'm just with the spatula kind of knocking everything back down the sides. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more of my smoked salt. And you could use regular salt here too. I mean, I just happen to have the smoked salt, so I'm gonna use it. Now again, because I didn't have like a jalapeno, I'm gonna use these mild chilies and I'm just gonna use a, like a spoonful of them, maybe two. I'm trying to not get the juice because these tomatoes are gonna be plenty juicy for this. <clears throat> and I'm gonna plop in my tomatoes Ah, juice everywhere. See, I told you, they're very juicy. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some cilantro in at this stage too, however much you want. And again, that's another optional thing. Ah, lid. 
Oh, God. I got tomato everywhere. Oh, yeah. This is like a restaurant style salsa. <laughs> I want to know, is your kitchen as messy as mine after you're done making this? And I'm going to put the pineapple in last because I don't, I just want to like pulse it really quick so that it doesn't get like pulverized. And then I've got half a lime here that I'm going to squirt into. Oh, that lime doesn't have very much juice in it. Uh, we'll get what we can out of it. Mmm, I love the smell of lime. Uh, lime for, for, how do you say that? Verbena, I think. Oh, it's my favorite scent. Well, and coconut, lime and coconut. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna just give this one quick pulse. And then we're gonna get the chip to taste it, right? Uh, that's hot, I don't wanna put. Ooh, okay, ideally, you would probably wait till this cools down, but. Mmm, that's so good. All right. It definitely needs more salt, especially if um, you're not using the salt of the chips, like on the fish, you know it's not going to be very salty. So I'm going to add a little bit more salt here. And then, where'd my spatula go? Kind of stir it around again. Oh, that pineapple didn't get chunked up very much. I'm going to chunk it one more time. Ah, oh, that's why I didn't put that in the sink yet. I need All right. Now let's try it again. Oh yeah, I can see the chunks of pineapple in here. It's so good. Mmm, there it is. So here we have it. Salsa, pineapple salsa fish. Tilapia to be exact. Let's give it a taste. Get some of the fish. Yeah, we have a winner. This is delicious. It's light and refreshing. You're gonna wanna make this. And if you get a chance, check out Greg's YouTube channel, The Pot Thickens, uh, for giving me this great idea to char up the salsa. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.